Welcome back to Opinion Journal. I'm Mary Kissel. Tom Perez was confirmed as our nation's labor secretary on Thursday. Despite concerns over the deal he struck with the city of St. Paul, Minnesota, to get a case withdrawn from the Supreme Court, his admission that he broke federal law and his refusal to comply with a House subpoena. Florida Senator Marco Rubio joins me now by phone. Senator, if the Senate uh, confirms a guy like this, well, who won't they confirm? Well, that's precisely my point, and that's uh, two things. Obviously, I objected to his record. Uh, his record as an assistant attorney general was not one of trying to apply the law or enforce the law. It was a record of someone that was pursuing an activist, extremist, liberal agenda. On case after case, on instant after instance, you cited the St. Paul example, but you know he, he brought charges against a... Uh, uh, a sidewalk uh, counselor in front of an abortion clinic, and the case was so outrageous that the judge reprimanded them for even bringing it. Um, you know, he actually argued in a brief that the the government, the First Amendment, did not prevent the government from from influencing or trying to control what a who a church could hire to teach religion at one of their schools. I mean, these are just outrageous left wing positions that are well outside the mainstream of American political thought. So I objected to his nomination based on that. I objected to moving forward on his nomination without any further debate on the notion that he has an outstanding subpoena from the House Oversight Committee, which he has basically ignored, a subpoena to turn over over 1,200 emails from his personal email that he used to conduct official business. Yet, Senator, six Republican senators did vote for cloture. What does it say about the cohesiveness of the GOP in the Senate that that happened? Well, I would just say that I think it's unfortunate that in an effort to protect the filibuster, uh, we did not protect our constitutional obligations. I mean, the bottom line is, no matter how you felt about this nominee, whether it was a Republican, someone who has an outstanding subpoena from a House Oversight Committee, which he has refused to comply with and, quite frankly, just flat out ignored, there should at least be more debate. I mean, members have a, should have the opportunity before they're forced to vote on someone to have all the information about their record. And the fact that he's now able to successfully hide over 1,200 emails of him conducting official business in violation and defiance of a House subpoena, I just think is, is very, very tragic and very unfortunate. Can he continue to snub the House subpoena now that he's a member of the cabinet without any consequences? Well, ultimately, at some point, the House will have to move to try to enforce it. But the, the, the bottom line is he'll now be heading the Labor Department. We now have an activist, left-wing extremist running the Labor Department. And I promise you that it's not going to be good for growing our economy and making America a more attractive place to do business. But beyond that, we have a sitting cabinet member that's an open defiance of the congressional branch. You know, these checks and balances that we all talk about, this is a, this is a powerful and important constitutional principle. And to allow a sitting cabinet member confirming him in the last couple of days to just openly defy that, uh, I just think it's outrageous. No, it defies belief. I want to change topic very briefly, Senator. We've got about a minute left. I know you're in Florida today talking with small business owners about Obamacare. What is the feedback that you've gotten so far about the effect of the law on costs for these small business owners? Well, it's not just for small business owners. For all business owners, the costs are going to be extensive. But the real cost is going to be paid by the workers, and that's who I'm most concerned about. Businesses are going to do what they need to to stay in business. It's the workers that are going to pay the price. It's people that are going to lose coverage they're happy with. It's people that are going to have to pay more than they used to pay. It's people who are going to get their hours cut. It's people that are going to lose their jobs. And it's people looking for work that are not going to be able to find it, all because businesses, big and small, are dissuaded from hiring more people or growing and need to find cost savings because of this disastrous Obamacare law. Do you support efforts to delay the individual mandate as well as the business mandate? Well, I support efforts to repeal the law. <laughs> Certainly, I think that at a minimum, you know, I think it's hypocritical for the president to say he's going to veto a bill that basically codifies what he's already announced. But this law is unimplementable. I think we should not fund it. I've already said that I don't think that when, when we vote on a short-term budget in September that it should fund Obamacare. And I've been very clear. Anyone who votes for a short-term budget that pays for Obamacare is paying to fund a disaster. Paying to fund a disaster, a cabinet member now in open defiance of subpoena, it does defy belief. Florida Senator Marco Rubio, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you.